Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert Dr. Amy Vazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show. I am beyond excited to have Dr. Blake Evans on again today. Hi, Blake. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. And you wrote a pretty amazing article with a team of other fertility experts, some of the most well-respected in the country, titled COVID-19 Vaccine and Infertility, Baseless Claims and Unfounded Social Media Panic. Thank you for writing this article and for coming on today to talk about it. Absolutely. I'm happy to talk about it. Can you tell our audience members a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So I am a uh, reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist currently working at the University of Oklahoma. I'm one of the faculty members there. Uh, we have a fellowship program um, in which we have three fellows, the first, second, and third year. And there's three other physicians in addition to myself. And we have a physician assistant. Um, and it's a fantastic place to work. So I just started working there after I finished fellowship last June from the NIH. and so. Here I am. Let's talk about the vaccines. There's lots of big news out there, and it's really exciting that they have great efficacy rates. But there are a lot of fertility myths about how they affect fertility, how they can impact pregnancy. Let's just get to the basics of the vaccines. What are the two vaccines? So the, the two vaccines that are currently under uh, emergency authorization from the FDA are from Pfizer is one company and Moderna is the other company both of which had very large, well-conducted studies, randomized, blinded studies, in which uh, the Pfizer study was about 44,000 uh, volunteers that had enrolled. Um, and then it was a one-to-one -one ratio of people getting the vaccine or a placebo. And then similarly with Moderna, uh, except the study was a little over 30,000 people. So still a very robust, well-written, well-done study. Um, and that's, that's kind of where we are. Those are the two main ones. Whenever you hear about the vaccine currently, those are the two that mainly people are getting today. And how do they prevent COVID-19? So the way they work is, is quite interesting, actually. So they contain what's called mRNA, or messenger ribonucleic acid. And the way that it works is it's basically an amino acid sequence of what's called the spike protein, or the protein that's responsible for the COVID virus to enter into our cells and then start to replicate. So the way the virus works is it has the mRNA, so basically the sequence of the spike protein from COVID, and it utilizes our body's own immune system to take this mRNA and then what's called translate to a protein. So our, basically our body is using our immune cells, our T cells and B cells, what normally would help and make antibodies, it's making an antibody to this protein that the COVID virus has. So then in the future, if having been vaccinated, we're exposed to the COVID virus, um, also known as the SARS-CoV-2 virus, then we would have an antibody, an army of antibodies waiting to defend the natural infection of COVID. I love that. That's a very easy way for us to think about the vaccine and how it works. And there have been so many false claims out there that the vaccines, and I quote, could lead to female sterilization. Where the heck did this come from? Yeah, it's, uh, it was quite shocking to hear, and it's understandably caused uh, a huge uproar um, and, a, and a lot of concern in the patients uh, in the infertility world or patients that are trying to get pregnant or who are pregnant already. But this basically came from a blog, and it was called Health and Money News. And it was a petition that two scientists had uh, basically put forth, one of which is a, a previous employee of Pfizer a little over 10 years ago. Whether there's ulterior motives from them posting this or they left on bad terms, I have no idea. But the, uh, the claim was that uh, the vaccine will, in quote, or what the paper had quoted or the statement quoted was that it has a spike protein. The vaccine has a spike protein that's called uh, syncytin-1. And this protein, syncytin-1, and 
is, is responsible and is vital for the formation of the human placenta. So this protein, um, it helps form a layer to ultimately help exchange blood and nutrients between the placenta or the fetal and maternal um, blood circulation. And they said that this protein, syncytin 1, has a similar amino acid sequence to the spike protein that's on COVID or it's in the vaccine. And so in their words, and, and actually quoting from this statement, it says the spike protein contains syncytin 1 homologous protein. So basically saying that because the syncytin 1 protein is similar and or some of the amino acids are similar to the spike protein that our body is going to make a, an antibody to fight against syncytin 1 and therefore attack a human placenta and lead to sterilization as they literally quoted. So, um, which is completely baseless. They just, it wasn't founded on any evidence. They just, they just stated this and it's caused quite the panic in all of our patients. And so as I know a lot of doctors are going to be actually listening to this because I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say, when are you going to have Dr. Evans on? So how can we bust this myth with our patients so they feel comfortable getting the vaccine if they're trying to get pregnant or if they're already pregnant? Sure. So it's um, kind of a multi-layered question and answer, but ultimately more evidence is going to um, come out eventually. You know, to this day, at this point in time, uh, we don't have that evidence, but we, what we do know are the fundamental aspects of just science and how these vaccines work and uh, our current very large studies from Pfizer and Moderna uh, with a very good safety profile as well. But ultimately, um, it's well, and one thing I'll also note is they said that the vaccine contains syncytin 1, but it actually does not. The vaccine does not contain syncytin 1 or the mRNA sequence of syncytin 1. Um, and I'll also give the disclaimer that I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this protein correctly. I've heard it pronounced syncytin, syncytin, so we're just going to stick with syncytin 1 for the duration of this. Um, but to, in order to, to bust the myth, ultimately, we have to think about even if the spike protein and the syncytin 1 protein shared similar amino acid sequences, which they don't, and we talked about that in the paper, they're not coding for the same protein ultimately, which is what the vaccine is forming antibodies to. And so in order to ultimately um, to make this claim or for them to be able to have uh, a proof or uh, background knowledge to claim that it causes sterility, they would have to demonstrate that there would be significant homology between the two, meaning they're almost identical, and the protein that's ultimately made is very similar in structure, and therefore the antibody that's made to that protein is going to be identical. So for one, they'd have to make that claim, and two, you'd have to demonstrate that there is potential cross-reactivity and binding that's induced to the antibodies that are made from the vaccine, and, and does it ultimately impair placental formation? And those are just things that are absolutely not evident in any literature at this point in time. Um, and as I mentioned in our article as well, we took, we use this really handy tool that we use commonly in the lab and it's called BLAST. And basically you take two different sequences or whether it be amino acid or protein structure and you can compare them and see if there is homology between the two and how similar they are in structure. And we found that when we compared the human syncytin 1 protein and the SARS-CoV-2 surface glycoprotein, also known as the spike protein, there was just not any significant homology between the two structures. And so to say that an antibody would be formed against the two from this vaccine is just, um, it's irresponsible to say. And, and there's just no evidence behind it and it's caused a necessary panic in our patients. Right. So there is no threat to women or their fertility in taking the COVID-19 vaccine, correct? There's no evidence that it does. And at this point in time, this not only just based off of what I'm saying, but also the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, uh, in addition to several of the Women's Health Societies, American College of OBGYN, Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine, uh, they've they've made statements basically saying that because the COVID-19 vaccines are not composed of live virus, the way that they work, they're not thought to cause any increased risk of infertility, first or second trimester loss, or any congenital abnormalities. And that was the next myth I actually wanted to bust, is that I've also heard so many false claims about them causing miscarriage. 
and you just said it out loud, but can you say it again? Do they lead to an increased risk of miscarriage? And what were your findings around the vaccine and miscarriages? Yeah, those are very important questions. And, and at this current time, no, there's no obvious evidence that these vaccines do increase the risk of miscarriage. Um, but you also have to think in terms of even the patients who have COVID, just a natural infection from getting COVID, uh, the, the one paper that I, in particular, we cited in this, in our article was from the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and there was about 220 patients that they had looked at and, and to see if there was any increased risk in patients who had and who did not have COVID, and there was no increased risk in the two groups of miscarriage uh, in those who had COVID and who did not. And so that's um, one of the few that's currently available that shows there's no increased risk of miscarriage. And so we have to think, you know, if our bodies are making these natural or someone who gets COVID has natural antibodies that are forming against the spike protein, you would think that the same way as a vaccine, it might increase your risk to miscarriage. And we just aren't seeing that at this point. Um, another thing I'll mention, too, that's important is that in the two studies, so in both Pfizer and Moderna, there were patients that did get pregnant, although neither of these trials intentionally enrolled pregnant women, but patients became pregnant during these trials. In the Pfizer study, there was 23 patients that became pregnant and there was report of one miscarriage in that study, but it was in the placebo group. So basically they, they did not receive the vaccine. And similarly to the Moderna study, there was I think 12 or 13 patients that got pregnant as the study was being conducted. And there was one patient who did have a miscarriage, but she also was in the placebo arm. So there's just at this point in time, no evidence to believe um, that it causes increased risk of miscarriage either. Thank you for that. So um, I'm just gonna go through a few like myth busting things and you're gonna go true or false. Here we go. I heard that COVID-19 vaccine might reduce fertility in young women. Is this true? False. I also was reading that they did animal studies as well as part of you know the clinical trials um they in rats they gave them the vaccine while they were they were either pregnant or before they were allowed to mate and there were no effects on fertility pregnancy or health of the babies right true yes i heard that um the government is telling people that they should not get the vaccine if they're pregnant or planning on becoming pregnant within the next few months is this true or false this is false. Right? There's no one saying that women should not be getting the vaccine. That's right. Yeah, quite quite opposite, actually, of what is being said by all of our women's health societies. I'm breastfeeding. The vaccine is something that I should avoid. True or false? False. Definitely not something that you should avoid at this point. COVID in pregnancy is no big deal. True or false? That is definitely false, and we have we have evidence definitely behind that. Are you wanting me to say true or false, or give a commentary on the side? All the commentary you'd like to give. Okay, yeah. So these things are um, very important questions and questions that we deal with on a daily basis from all of our patients. But um, although, of course, we're acknowledging that pregnant women were not enrolled in these trials, but once again, we're based off of how they work animal studies and the current limited evidence that we do have, um, it's a it's a risk benefits type of thing that, to talk with your doctor about. But um, when we have statements set forth by ASRM, uh, like I said, American Society of Reproductive Medicine, American College of OBGYN, Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine, just to name a few, that, it, that say that patients who are either planning to conceive, who are pregnant, or who are breastfeeding, they should not have the vaccine withheld from them and they encourage patients that are, um, so pretty much patients at this point in time who are tier one or actually being offered the vaccine at this point, those are the ones who are considered to be at a higher risk of contracting COVID. Um, it's recommended by, the, by these societies to get the vaccine because we do know that the risk of COVID when you are pregnant leads to a higher risk of in, intensive care unit admission, uh, mechanical ventilation, like being intubated, having a tube down your throat and helping you breathe, um, and also increased risk of death. So these are things that we definitely do know. And so weighing the potential risk, the theoretical and un, um, I shouldn't say unknown, but the theoretical risk of the vaccine that's being um, thrown around by several people, weighing that with the known risk of COVID and being pregnant, um, it's, 
it's something that a vaccine should be offered to these patients. And that's what all these women's health societies are advocating for. That's right. I mean, I tell my patients to get the vaccine when they can. I feel that the benefits far outweigh any of the potential and minimal side effects. And it's more dangerous for a pregnant woman to get COVID and possibly, just like you said, be on a ventilator than it is to get the vaccine based on everything that we know right now. Well, thank you, Dr. Evans, for everything that, that you and the society members are doing to put out um, these types of myth-busting articles. I imagine it's it's hard to be on the front line sharing this information because sometimes people might um what's the word that uh that that i that i'm trying to think of that i can't say out loud they might have a healthy level of skepticism and they still might doubt the medical information that we're trying to disseminate to them how does that make you feel when or how do you react when someone provides a commentary that might not be in line with the medical literature yeah, that's a great question. So I think what's extremely important for patients to, to hear and understand, as well as providers, is that patient autonomy is always extremely important to us. And um, in no way, shape or form would we say that, you know, you have to get the vaccine. If you don't, you're a bad person. That's not by any in any way what I want to convey. Um, because patient autonomy is is very well respected amongst all of us as providers, but um, it's our part of our job, part of our duty to um, convey what we do know about the current literature, about the evidence, um, the potential harms versus benefits, and why we do advocate for the vaccine. And if a patient ultimately decides to not get it, then then that's fine, as long as they understand what the current evidence is from trusted sites and uh, um, you know, not something like TikTok or something on social media. And that's one of the large drives as to why I wanted to write this paper because I was just floored by all the misinformation going around there that the vaccine could lead to infertility. And it was based off of, like I said, just a blog, um, just completely baseless and just completely freaking out all of our patients. So. Um, I felt it was really crucial to just get this message out there that um, we're advocating for the patients. We have no reason to believe that it would cause any increased risk to you as a patient, whether trying to get pregnant or pregnant or lactating. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Evans. We appreciate your time. And for those of you guys who want to read the article, you can go to my website or just go to Fertility and Sterility, COVID-19 Vaccine and Infertility, Baseless Claims and Unfounded Social Media Panic by Dr. Blake Evans and his amazing scientific uh, crew. <laughs> I love all the docs, they're all, I love them all, they're all awesome. Yeah, it was a fantastic crew to work with. Okay, well, thank you again for your time, really appreciate you. Yes, thank you so much. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Lazadine. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. 